everybody well uh, this is our 15 minute late uh, Tuesday afternoon live with um, two old blokes <laughs> Robin and me and uh, we're going to talk about a mask this, this is actually Jean-Luc's mask which is now um, uh, Robin's mask my mask yeah your mask but before we do just so you know where we are um, this is actually the yacht services yard in Vondé and uh, our office is just behind that big boat there and normally this yard is actually full of uh, when the Vondé globe is on this this whole yard here is full of containers from all the various competing teams uh, but now they just use uh, they, they refit uh, from new a lot of lagoons and uh, bits and pieces and uh, that's the privileged factory we're at the back of that and the marina is just behind that factory so uh, we're still right in touch with um, right in touch with what's going on here so now um, we'll carry on and we'll talk about this mast before we do who's been beating you up show them some of your war wounds at boat building <laughs> hole in your head I don't know. Start, no come on show them the proof show them the arms and bits and pieces what are you doing it just happens i don't know <laughs> i mean i i bump things you know you're you're in and out of things and <laughs> yeah okay um you know so you get bumped on the head and you get scratched and it's actually it. that just reminds me uh, i don't know whether you've got time to do this um, I nearly no, I won't go there. An, an accident. It's really interesting, actually. We, we've digressed here straight away. Yeah, right. Building boats, the potential for accidents is really high, right? You know, like it's just there's always something going on. You're using a grinder or whatever. There's always something. I nearly lost my eye here. I was working on a mast. Um, I had one hand up inside the mast holding a spanner. The other hand, or was this hand, up the mast with a spanner. I was screwing up a bolt underneath, pushing a lot of pressure on the mm -hmm. on the. Um, the screwdriver screwing it up screwing it up and it slipped off it it then turned as it the pressure of me pushing it up on the mask went straight and hit that bone Ooh. there threw my head back and i went like that and i went oh i got it and i thought i'd poke my eye through but you know that that much difference and i would have just gone boom so happen. be careful when you're working on a boat okay so what we're going to do is we're going to go through this could be really boring for some but we're going to go through the uh, generics of this mast and all the fittings and so on it's actually a Sparcraft mast here in, in France. The same builder that Jean-Luc has used for all of his boats um, mm -hmm. around the world. He's got a lot of faith in the build and uh, I first saw this in November of 16 during the Vendée Globe. Um, this was built brand new for Jean-Luc. He trialled it for three months and decided he didn't need the extra height so ordered a brand new shorter one and Robbins bought the, this one with the sails and all that sort of stuff. Mast, sails, rigging, furler the whole nine yards so it's all just going to hopefully presumably when we put it up on Thursday just fit on my boat yeah and the deal is that when in the the concept of the GGR you can't have a mast that's any longer than the original um, production boat so I know this is the exact right length the boom is tucked away still the boom has to be the same length you cannot decrease the size of the wire okay um, it's got to be a minimum the original diameter you can make it stronger or thicker and uh, I, you can go from single spreader to two spreader that's that's part of the deal um, so Jean-Luc decided on a twin spreader rig he got a keel stepped mast so this is going down the keel so the first thing we've got is the collar this is pretty substantial how would you describe that you know well this is the collar this is where the this is where the deck is that that collar actually the the the, the, the rubber seal and the collar goes there that that goes on there there's a collar piece here that is bolted down to the deck I just bolted that down this morning so this clamps to the piece on the deck this is the deck here then that goes down into the keel you know down into so, the bottom of the boat so usually they have a foam plug on the inside as well to stop water and then a hole in the side to drain water yeah. out have you heard anything about that yet <laughs> I haven't looked for that yet but yeah, okay. uh, if it's there it'll be there yeah because what happens is with the mast up the top you'll get water inside the mast right and then the water will come down and it goes down through the middle of the mast and comes down here keep looking at me Jane Jane <laughs> right and Robin um, and so you can put a foam collar inside to block it then the water dams up here and then runs out you drill a hole in the side but that's another option you know if there's if there's some water coming down hey, that's what the pumps are yeah. for I pump okay. it out so this is the furling gear while we're here we're going to go through this have a look at this Jane Jane it's a uh, Faulkner fur furling gear an, L, uh, an LS180 so can you see that you're going down 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 um, pretty standard furling gear now most of the brand names are all pretty good eh? they're all pretty good yep. uh, what John Luke did with this when he was putting this together instead of having five or six sections of, of foil he got much much longer sections made up so I think there's only two or three sections yeah. so it was uh, a special job it was a special yeah. job for the boat and for the race yeah 
because mm -hmm. usually that's one of the things you know this is a solid bar here if you can see that Jane Jane you gotta get down Oop, going the wrong way um, it's a solid round section right which is good for wrapping the sail up and where the joins are it has an infill in the middle and that's where it works and if your join actually starts to get sloppy the sail gets caught in the joins so it's a weak it's a potential weakness and John Luke overcame that as I say by as you saying by getting a uh, extra long extrusion so he's probably only got three joins or two joins he's got less joins yeah two right. joins instead of they, right. uh, like a profile will come in two meter sections mm -hmm. and so you've got a lot of joins there Okay, so all of this looks pretty straightforward. That's um, normal winch pads and all the rest of it. Interestingly, it's all riveted on. You know, These that's are riveted all. on, but I, my, I'm doing all of my winching from on deck, so I'm not mounting any winches on, on the mast here. Jean-Luc took his winches off and took them with him to his other mast, and I'm not putting winches on here. I've so you've got, got my, all your winches on deck, around winch, the mast? My winches, well, they're on deck. Yeah. They may be back in the cockpit, yeah. or they may be... Um, uh, on on the deck at the front of the yep. uh, the the cabin. Yep. Okay. All right. So uh, coming up here, this was another interesting thing I found. I always tend to think huge and solid and mm -hmm. oversized and everything. When mm -hmm. I first saw Jean Luc's halyards, I thought, wow, this is low tech halyards. It's all just polyester and mm -hmm. uh, Dacron. There's no Kevlar, Spectra, you know, no. Vectran or anything. No. Nope. But he hasn't gone oversized. This well, is safe weight. The, these are for the poles. Yeah. These, oh, are, the, these are the up halyards, poles yeah, for yeah. the poles. This is, this is a halyard here, this is this yeah, okay. one and this, so these thicker ones are the halyards. Yeah, so they're 12 mil or 10 mil? They're, they're 10, that's a 10. They're that's 10, a 12. 12. He's pr okay, they're different things, we'll work out what they are in a minute, but um, yeah, okay, so it's 10 and 12. So when you look here, um, you've got... That's that's a halyard there. That's a halyard. Yeah, he's they're got, both halyards. We've got a spinnaker halyard. That's this one's a, the, the this one's a spinnaker one is, Elliot. That's eight mil, I think. Yeah, eight this mil. This one's ten mil. Yeah, all standard stuff. Just little tiny baby bloody uh, swivel shackles, mm -hmm. snap shackles, good ferrules mm -hmm. on the top. They look like wishard. Yeah, they are. Um, mm -hmm. Proper splicing. Yeah, so that's pretty cool. This 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 one I think is. Oh, it doesn't matter. We'll have a look when we get up that's there. That's the station. Yep. Okay. So then he's got pretty solid jammers there. Rutgerson jammers. Yeah. I think he's Rutgerson. I think he's Rutgerson. I think he's using that for his batten cars, eh? Yes. I so think we'll so. try and have a look here. You hang on to that thing, Jane. Come over this side. And I'll go. Um, let's see what track he's got. Okay, no external track, so he's using sliders with the wheels on the track. Sliders with wheels. Okay, it's so very simple. Very so if you just come down liar. down here, Jane, Jane. So this is actually the mainsail track, and there is no bolted on uh, external track. Uh, for batten cars but it's a type of slider that goes inside that track and it has external wheels that run down the back edge of the mast extrusion itself and straight away the beauty of that is you get rid of another problem because if you're screwing a track on and the screws come undone it's a total nightmare it's a it's a <laughs> horror story so yeah. no, we, we're for for this size of mast and rig you probably don't need to be bolting on any track yeah that makes sense um okay so that's that's a good move um very simple exit sheave there there's no sheave it's just a stainless steel liner i don't know if you can see that um so that one is his stay sail halid by the look what's that one no, that's going up. This is the main halyard or topping lift. That'll be the topping that, lift. That's a the, topper because that, it's only top, small. That's the topping lift. Yep, okay. Well. So and that's the topper. The heavy blue one is the uh, is the halyard. Yeah, okay, we'll find that. But, you know, it's interesting mm -hmm. because normally every boat I've ever had, you have double, you know, you have topping lift and, and uh, uh, main halyard, but they're both the same. I'll have a carry, this weight aloft and so on. I know, you know. but when, when we actually get to the race, I'll have two the same. Yeah, exactly. Um, you've got to have a spare. Yeah, but Jean-Luc would have sailed like that. He would, have, he would have thought That's it's right. saving weight aloft. That's right. And he can always rig another one. Yep. You know, we can run it yep. through, mouse it and run it through. Yep. Um, he's always looking for whatever saving he can, but still keeping the, the redundancy. You know, yep. he would have had a spare heli down there. Um, the other interesting thing is there's no, uh, there's no uh, external trisail track. Okay? So he hasn't got a trisail. Because a lot of guys will say, we want to have a trisail, and so we've got to have a track there, yep. and so on. No track, no nope. trisail, Don't just a mainsail. It. Don't need it. Yeah, and he's only got one. How many mainsails are you going to take? I'm probably going to take one. <laughs> um, <laughs> I haven't come to terms with that yet. I, I would never normally say that, but he's really got me thinking, eh? Yeah, yeah. I'm probably just going to take one. I'm going to yep. take the trisail for the um, uh, jury rig. Yeah. And... If I really had to, for some reason, you know, for you know, 
I, I could get rid of the mainsail and put the trisail in the, yeah, in yeah. the track. You know, yeah. I'll, I'll work out how to do it. Yeah, i got to say, Jean-Luc is really screwing me over in a lot of different things now. <laughs> anyway, I got me to decide. Uh, I don't think he's... I don't th- I, I I'll, have, think I'll have a mizzen anyway. I'll have a mizzen, and if I had a real problem, I could take the mizzen off and put it on the main. That's true. Um, you know, that's but true. anyway, yeah. But yeah, Jean-Luc went with no trisail, just one mainsail, that's it. Um, so, okay, moving along here. Um, what are we looking at here? Normal uh, exit sheaves. Yeah, he's got how, them labelled. Hang on, well, we're still on John Luke's mainsail. How many reefs did he have in the I main? I think he only had three. Okay, because I'll have four. My, yeah. my fourth reef will be a, a trisal size or maybe a little smaller. Yeah, I, I have to look at the photos, but I'm pretty certain he's only got three. They're solid mm-hmm. ones, you know, big, yep. big solid ones. Yep. And uh, um, he'll, he'll go from there anyway. So that's the standard sheave. It's just an exit stainless steel um, anti chafe. Really heavy duty navigation lights. <laughs> this is his steaming light, I take it. That's his steaming light. Yeah, very simple. In fact, is that is that? Um, it's hard to see if it's, it looks like a normal bulb, but it, it looks like a normal bulb. But it's Real probably shame. an LED. Yeah. It's yeah, probably yeah. Probably an LED bulb. Probably LED. Anyway, um, interesting here. He's got stiffeners inside the extrusion. See all these pot rivets here. He's doubled up the sides of the extrusion here. Let's go down the end well, and have a look at the thing. It's not just the sides, it's the whole section. From, it's the whole from, thing, okay. Come from, come right down here, Jane Jane. From here. Just, yeah, where it goes through the deck. So he, so here's the a quick look at the, the section, that single layer. Um, they've got these little stiffening ribs here, and that's probably where he slides in the extrusion. They could put one in the front and the sides. Yeah. So, oh, I can see it up there. Okay, yep. he, you can see it up here. It's just the sides here. You can see the extrusion there, the extras. So it's going from the extra strength he's got is down the side here and here, right? Just on the sides, not on the leading edge. Mm-hmm. Is that the leading edge? Trailing edge. That's the leading edge. So leading it edge. just goes there. That's a pretty cool section, eh? Because he can, like, as I say, it's down the sides there. Yeah. So just coming back down this way again, Jane Jane. So it starts from here, just before it goes through the deck collar. It goes from here and it's extending all the way up to the first just below the first spreader. So he's got double double sides, which would stiffen that up a huge amount. Yeah. Absolutely huge amount. Um, where's the gooseneck attachment here? Goose here we go. attachment is... Oh, under the, under the frame here. No, look at it. Oh, here it is. No, okay. That, yep, that's it. That, oh, that's the vang. That's, that's the vang. Oh, here it is. Here's the gooseneck. Okay, now straight away yeah. he's done something that I would do as well. He's got... So this is the vang attachment here, mm-hmm. right? Um, at deck level. That's right there, yep. just above the deck. This is going to be the boom here, and they're identical fittings. So yep. what it means is, if you ever broke this anyway, and I'm not saying you would, because that is, that's a, um, oh, that's interesting, that's a, a fabrication still. Okay, so that's a fabrication, and it looks like very high tensile uh, aluminium, and it's got stainless steel liners inside there, it's got stainless steel liners. Um, but if that ever broke or cracked or anything, you could take the one off the off the van and swap them over yep you know so that's pretty cool um he's got guides there that's probably for the reefing lines that's for the reefing reefing lines. lines coming through so that'll be the luff lines um coming through the doubled up and over and goes straight down to to the deck there uh what else has he got there uh they're just guides yeah one each side so that's pretty cool all pretty standard technology okay jane jane let's keep moving this way big stainless steel cast or forged they'll be cast forged one two three for the, for the spinnaker poles. poles so no track no sliding track no don't just need it. yeah yeah just straight on so uh, okay keep coming this way and then here's where it gets interesting there's some common things here some very you go down this way jane jane the shoot from here so external link plates for the um uh for the lowers um pretty well done because normally it's just that it doesn't have this extra link here you know so the idea is well first of all that's your that's your standing forward and aft lowers what you what you tend to have now on boats and it's on my it's on my old mast is what really is a hook and the hook just hooks into a, a, a fitting oh, here rubbish yeah and <laughs> whereas here now we've got a bolt that goes right the way through there'll be a compression tube inside like spacer yeah the mast so that it, th- this bolting can't actually compress the mast in and then these these so it's a very substantial attachment here yeah, normally of, um, normally you don't see this no you and don't it's kind of interesting because because the bolts there 
the only time this would do any work is if that bolt started to slide down the yep it's like a double safety that's right because this won't do any work unless that bolt moves Correct. and the only way it can move is start to wear into the mm -hmm. extrusion and go down so it's again this is for around the world mm -hmm. you know it's quite cool very simple um okay so then we come to the spreaders that's a plastic cover that's a plastic cover that's and a it's, cover. A, it's it's a very solid substantial fitting that yeah. goes through here um, yeah, again, and, and, and that's supports these here's, just just ho if you hold that, that will give a bit. I think you'll find just if I try and hold the section, just try and rock the spreader f side to side, just let it down a bit, no, like that way. Oh no, it's pretty solid, eh? it's pretty solid. Yeah, okay, because sometimes they do allow a bit of movement, but mm. okay, so that's that's a, a fitting again that's gone all the way through, comes inside here, it's extended right up to there. This spreader then just slips onto that, mm -hmm. it's held in with pins and split crew, split screw split ring uh, you know um uh, what do you call them cotter pins, cotter pins. yeah cotter pins pull mm -hmm. back and that's just a guide to stop a bit of uh, mm -hmm. chafe and so on um because that's a metal fitting in other words where the rivets are it's very substantial it, it's stronger than it looks and this thing's just a just a cover plate you know what i mean yep yeah um so and this is quite sharp eh that'll get taped up oh, and bloody all the rest of it. Up, won't it flag halid now here's the next inter most interesting one. It's yeah, this. this is, it's this is really yeah. This is cool. Um, now this is. Can we roll that a little bit? Because what you've got. Yep. Are these really substantial? Uh, yeah. Fittings now just here. just to explain here the difference. First of all, this is called discontinuous rigging. Up here, Jing Jing. Up here. Up here. You need to get the camera angles right so you have got both. Really cool, right? Um, this is discontinuous rigging. So this cap shroud goes from the masthead up there, or just below the masthead, it comes down through that top spreader, the first spreader, into the second spreader, but stops. And both of these ones, this is the inter, they're eight millimeter, and then this one comes to 10 millimeter. So and obviously- this, this one goes down to the deck. That's the cap, yeah, once going all the way down. It's so it's, it's, it's taking the load yeah. of both of these now, but it's got to move. So this is the critical engineering bit, and this is really smart. So now you can come in and have a quick look so at this. Some, it's it's pretty heavy, heavy, heavyweight stuff. Yeah, that moves. So there's no work hardening. Boats now. You know, like that that takes up any movement. So that this, yeah. the, the the critical part of these is this part right here. When you've got wire rigging going into the swage here, it goes into a pipe, and then they clamp that onto the wire so it can never come out. That's where they always break. Just here, where the wire is moving. If this mm. can't move, so. So in other words, if that's held there and this is moving, it'll work hard in there. But you can see straight away, it's rocking this way, it's rocking that way, everything's free floating. Incredibly strong, but incredibly simple. Yep. Yeah. It's good. So, and how would you describe that one? That's a ball. Well, that one, that one's on a, on a ball. Um, Same as that other cup, thing that we looked at. A ball and a cup, you can see that there, when you actually look in there. That fits right in, but that's, that allows and enables that to, artic you know, articulate yeah. a little way so it's it not a, to not american stuff america cup stuff <laughs> but it's simple proven really honest yeah pretty engineering pretty, pretty strong tough i'd stuff. be happy with that mm -hmm. you know and you just tape all this up for for andy chafe you know that's a bit bit sharp you know but leave it all moving oh, or yeah, put yeah. leather around you, it or you, something you've got to tape it and leather it and all sorts of stuff by the time you get to the race start yeah mm -hmm. yeah and the other one interesting he's got these here to stop any little movement you know what yep. I mean? Like sometimes you don't even want to have this little movement, so you put shock cords between them and and so on. So uh, so that's pretty cool. Okay, so that's a grey aluminium anodised aluminium mast section carrying on. <laughs> right. Then we come to another. So pole, um, the poles come out here. The pole lifts oh, yeah. come oh, out here. Oh yeah, they're pretty good-looking sheet boxes. That's the halyards for the Over here, inner. Jen, can you see? You might need to. This is the inner four-stay fitting here. Okay, so again, it's just an investment car stainless steel tang coming out for the inner four stay, and that's been cut away really nicely, shaped onto the aluminium. They sl bring it from the inside out, so there'd be a big piece in here, and it's just held on there literally by two, two grub screws, one here, one there, because it's pulling out and down, so it's quite solid, eh? Well, what you, what you actually have here, you, you've got this, this as well, so... I'm not that's probably a separate boat. It's, it's a long way a from it. It's a separate piece altogether. But you, you've really got a very uh, solid. Um, these are the running backstays yep. here. Yeah. So. So that's got to move, which it does, and again, that's it's the got running the backstays. That's that's the sh stay Inter. that goes out. Yeah. Yeah. 
so th there's a lot there's a lot of good staying here for and it's just so simple you look mm -hmm. at it and you think that's cool it is what it is but it's mm -hmm. not wasted effort not wait no wasted weight um just really it's easy to look after too because you could un undo those grub screws and pull that out, pull them out to service it you know it's got synthetic sheaves there um that'd be not acetel but it'd be um pretty straightforward it's good looking gear I mean, it's by the time we've we've sailed the boat for the next you know three or four years, but you know the winter before the race, all these things are all going to come apart and be yeah. looked at, and yeah, yeah. you know if they're worn, replaced, and so yeah. on. Yeah, exactly. But yeah, I like the look of that. Um, this suits the, the the extrusion too. You can see they've got two there, but it's mm -hmm. it's one either side of the center line. Mm -hmm. So that's pretty cool. Another set of spreaders, exactly the same as what we looked at. Um, here's a join. Here's one join for the. Um, for the uh, furling gear, can you get it down there, Jing Jing? So yeah, when you look, that's one uh, section oh, just, to just, here. Uh, can you got it? There it's it is. One section right down. Yeah, and there. a little a little piece in the middle. So that's that's your joiners. That's where the sail can get caught if it's moving, and mm -hmm. where you get problems. But um, he's got that pretty well sussed. So that's pretty cool. Okay, so if we come down here, keep coming this way, and okay, the first thing is the taper. You can see here though. The way they've cut the taper, they've they've cut this with a jigsaw all the way down like this. Then they've taken a piece out, closed it up, and uh, welded it back together again. So it actually just saves a little bit of weight aloft. It's a little bit less windage, and it looks cool. It's high up, so taking some weight out high up isn't a bad thing. Um, yeah. And you can see, uh, unlike most modern masts now on regular boats, this is actually welded on. Yeah. This whole piece is welded on. It's not just a fitting that slots in with a couple of screws. Yeah, yeah. Um, it's, it's still got a lot of extrude, lot, lot of bits in there, and like plates and stuff. Yeah, but, but you've got pins and so on that you can take everything out. You yep. can you can remove and replace and repair and maintain. So yeah. that's pretty important. So what are we looking at? We've got he's got one spinnaker halyard. One spinnaker halyard. The second one isn't in at the moment, but yep. it will so be. got two. There's and that's a stainless steel fitting, that's cool because yep. that's not going to wear. Yep. Often two it's just uh, aluminium yep. up here. Yeah, you know. two spinnaker halyards. There's two Genoa halyards, one isn't in, so we've got a one to put in there. This, yep. is, this, is, the, this is the four stay here with the furling gear on it. Yeah, so that's got a double swivel sort of thing. A double swivel action going that, that way. Mm -hmm. There's another typical tang plate, uh, again through bolt with the back up there. Um, then... Uh, it's actually wow. The, the uh, interestingly, you, I would have thought the sheaves would have been bigger than that, bigger diameter. They only look as if they're like about a about a four inch. I think that's all they are, four yeah. inch. That's amazing. I would have thought they'd be five or six inches because on the main you can always have a bigger sheave if mm -hmm. you want. But anyway, they know what they're doing. They've done a lot of them, so um, so that's pretty straightforward. Um, ah, interesting. These are uh, lopo. No, what are they called? Um, I have these myself. These are really very expensive nav lights. Lopo light. Yeah, lopo lights. Yeah, these are bulletproof. A, it's a They're lovely light. I mean, it's a, an anchor light, so it's an all-round white. It's about twelve hundred dollars. <laughs> it's not cheap. Put it's it that about, way. The last one I bought was the Australian dollars was about twelve hundred dollars. Yeah, put it that. Yeah. But once you're on, you just know it's not going to go anywhere. And then you've got your port and starboard. You've got your yep. port starboard and stern yep. tri light. It's, so it's all incorporated and, that's, and it's that's the anchor light and that's or the it anchor. may even be a strobe because they look like really big things you know, like a anchor and strobe together i'm not sure but um but yeah very expensive but very good and i'd probably do the same mm -hmm. you don't want to be climbing up the mast change a globe eh? <laughs> no 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 bulb changing <laughs> yep, so yep. at the top of the mast here we've got the light we've got the vhf aerial yeah We've got the Windex. Yeah, which, which Jean-Luc conveniently broke before he sold it to you so that you wouldn't know where you're going. That's right, you know, that's, that's right. right. <laughs> it was a tactical decision. Windex is then. a little manual wind direction pointer, you yeah, know, but we, he decided. We don't, do have, we don't have wind instruments on board, so you've got your Windex. Yeah. Windex tells you what direction the wind's coming from relative it's, to the top of the mast. It's so. funny, eh? I don't know about you, but it's because we've been involved with GGR now for three years. Sometimes I start to think, what do you need all that electronic stuff for? <laughs> I don't know about you, but I sort of think that's the money we used to pay that's for all that sort of correct. stuff, and I think, geez, you don't really need half of it. Then the anyway. other thing that's worth looking at here, look, is the uh, backstay. Antenna this is the backstay. Insulator. This is the insulator. At the other end of the backstay, there's another insulator, and then the, then there's a little link that goes to the deck, so that when you connect your antenna, your your uh, uh, SSB. Uh, 
to this and this becomes the antenna for the SSB for the HF radio for the transmitter yeah okay so um, okay so it's it's all I mean it's again not rocket science all very simple um, this is the swivel up the, the halyard anti anti sort of tangle connector this the actual swivel that slides up here is down the bottom um, reasonable size blocks they're Ronston blocks um, that's only a two inch it's like 50 mil sheave yeah, they're so it's a 50 mil that's the right size yeah. you, you know I mean, I, they're, good. That, that all, they're all good mm -hmm. um, very simple so so the reality now is I just I had one person I forget who it was was asking me about your decisions and mm -hmm. a, a question on uh, on the race itself yeah uh, one was um, uh, if the catch rig is supposed to be so good mm -hmm. for balancing the boat, if you mm -hmm. lost your wind vane, right. why isn't everyone c choosing a catch rig boat? So why did you choose a sloop rig boat and not a catch rig? Um, <laughs> or cutter rig, I should say. You've got a cutter rig. Well, I mean, I, 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 I think it's fair to say that most of us that, that uh, went for the Russell 36 because we believed it to be the, the, the fastest boat in, yeah, you and know, and of, wasn't of, of the yeah. designs. Yeah. They are not catches we can't make them catches so yeah. but so you um, put all your effort in deciding on the right wind vane so but, then you know, then yeah. it boils down to the wind vane yeah but you know i four years time by the time i've sailed this boat a little while i, I i'm sure i'm going to work out how to make it sail without a wind vane yeah. yeah yeah i think it'd be a real smart thing to be able to sail it without <laughs> a wind vane uh, yeah. and to to know what's going to happen yeah you know yeah, and to yeah. have worked out why it won't do it and how to make it do it yeah exactly well, look, the, the other thing I'd say is, is uh, from my perspective, if I'm really lucky and uh, Father Christmas is good to me, I end up in a Joshua for 2022, which is a catch rig, that's cool. But if something happened and I had to do it in a Rustler 36, for instance, you know what I'd be doing? I would still fit another four stay and have two furling gears up the front. Um, you know, under the rules, under the rules of the GGA, you, you, you've got to have a minimum of what was standard in the production boats. And uh, and at the moment, I was, or previously, you may remember, I was going to go with uh, Tradewind 35. And I'm real hung up on certain things. All of us are. We've got our mm -hmm. pet favourites. And one of oh, mine yeah. is to have two furling gears on the front of the boat. One for a number one Genoa, the other one for a number two Genoa, right at the front. So you can run twins really easy. Mm -hmm. And you may have seen, uh, uh, you can still do it. Uh, Mark Slats has done it and uh, Philippe Pesch did it. They have a, a twin head sail with one yeah. Luff and Hanks and stuff yeah. or whatever. Um, but yeah, I'd be so tempted if I was racing one of these. I'd put another four stay right here mm -hmm. and put, a, put twin furling gears on. So, but then I wouldn't put a furling gear on the stay sail. Mm -hmm. Jean Luc put a furling gear on the stay sail. Um, I'm quite happy to go up there and change a little sail, like a stay sail or a storm jib. That's right. <laughs> I'm I'm certainly not putting uh, a, a furler on the inner four stay. Well, it's not my intention at the moment. Yeah. Um, you know, I've got a you know a big stay sail. The storm jib will ha will hang on as the yeah. basically the small stay sail or the storm yep. jib, and yep. and I think we'll be in great shape. Yeah, exactly. So. Uh, Anyway, so that was probably pretty boring to a lot of people, but the sailors that might have been watching it would be interesting to know. And again, this is the rig that Jean-Luc designed with Sparcraft in France to, to be his ultimate rig for uh, the GGR. And uh, they've worked as partners for 35 years or something on all of Jean-Luc's boats. He's only lost one mast that I know of. That was the carbon fibre one that, that uh, he dropped on the, on the big boat on Adrienne uh, when we pulled him into Hobart on a little ship. Um, but then he went back and replaced it and off he went. So it's amazing. It was an eye-opener for me when I saw it November 16. Mm -hmm. um, it's fantastic uh, that you're going to put it on your boat. <laughs> well, I think it's pretty good I've got it on my boat. But you know what? If Jean-Luc still had this mast, this rig, I still believe he'd be up there in probably this pretty pretty similar position to where yeah. he is now. I yeah, yeah. I think it's the person, not the rig. Yeah, yeah. But it's, the rig helps. No, it's the whole <laughs> package. It's, it comes back the same thing. It's the person, it's the boat, it's the preparation, That's it's right. the whole deal. That's and right. uh, Jean-Luc knew pretty early, at, well, when did Philippe Pest join? A couple of years into it. But he knew there'd be competition. Sure. Um, so, uh, so who knows what. But yeah, it's, a, it's an interesting choice. So... That's probably it. We're just going to bore people now if we get any more. Um, see you next week, next next Tuesday. Yeah, we're, <laughs> the, the, when's, the, when's the mast going up? What's the time? The like? mast is going up on Thursday. I, be, I believe Thursday morning, ten o'clock is is the booking for okay. for the uh, hoist to put this mast in my boat. So uh, we might be looking at the rig in the boat and the boom and all the bits and pieces and uh, going for a sail and uh, we'll meet them off uh, Hobart before they get there. Eh? That's right. We could get there before <laughs> them. Okay. Thanks for that. See you next time.